Okay, welcome back. Thank you for joining us, our online have root to our online community as we continue on in our um, Torah Parshiot. We're looking now in Akev, which I don't know what that means. Akev. Um, looks like it's obey. Oh, consequence. Akev. What a very nice word. So we're in Torah Parsha. Consequence. Dun, dun, dun. Again, thank you so much. And let's make this thing grow. Come on, come on along as we're in Devarim. Perik 7, starting with Pursuit 12, Torah portion Akev. Um, um, Devarim, Perik 7, Pursuit 12 is Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 12. Let's go. If you do not obey these rules and observe them carefully, your God, Hashem, will maintain faithfully for you the covenant covenant made on oath with your fathers that's say do not if you do obey these rules and observe them carefully your god Hashem will maintain faithfully for you the covenant made on oath with your fathers god will favor you and bless you and multiply you blessing your issue from the womb and your produce from the soil your new grain wine and oil and the calving of your herd and the landing of your flock and the land in the land sworn to your fathers to be assigned to you you shall be blessed above all the other peoples. There shall be no sterile male or female among you or among your livestock. Hashem will ward off from you all sickness. God will not bring upon you any of the dreadful diseases of Egypt about which you know, but will inflict them upon all your enemies. So these are signs to tell you that you're doing the right thing. Everybody's having babies. Nobody's barren. The animals having babies. Nobody's barren. No diseases that they saw in Egypt. Um, you shall destroy all the peoples that your God Hashem delivers you, showing them no pity. You shall not worship their gods, for that will be a snare to you. You should say to yourselves, these nations are more numerous than we. How can we dispossess them? Should you say to yourselves, sorry. So if you ask the question, these nations are more numerous than we, how can we dispossess them? You need have no fear of them. You have but to bear in mind that your God Hashem did to Pharaoh. You should bear in mind what your God Hashem did to Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. The wondrous acts that you saw with your own eyes, the signs and the portents, the mighty hand and outstretched arm by which your God Hashem liberated you. Thus will your God Hashem do to all the peoples you now fear. That's what he's going to do. That's what your God can do. Should you it that only comes up if you should say should say to yourself, they're so big, like numerous. How? And he tells them, what? All right, this is what the answer is going to be. Um, that your God Hashem will do to all the peoples you now fear. Your God Hashem will also send a plague against them, until those who are left in hiding perish before you. Do not stand in dread of them, for your God Hashem is in your midst, a great and awesome God. Your God Hashem will dislodge those people before you little by little. And you won't even be able to put an end. You will not be able to put an end to them at once. Else the wild beasts would multiply to your hurt. So he's giving them the, the plan now. Hashem is going to dislodge the peoples before you little by little. And you're not going to, you can't kill them all at once because the wild beasts will take over the land. And you got to figure out how to get rid of them. Your God Hashem will deliver them up to you. Throwing them into utter panic until they are wiped out. And God will deliver their kings into your hand and you shall obliterate their name from under the heavens. No one shall stand up to you until you have wiped them out. You shall consign the images of their gods to the fire. You shall not covet the silver, the gold on them and keep it for yourselves lest you be ensnared thereby. For that is abhorrent to your God Hashem. You must not bring an abhorrent thing into your house or you will be prescribed like it. You must reject it as abomin abominable. I'm gonna say abominable, slogan. Abominable and abhorrent, for it is proscribed. Let's just see. She's nobody saying anything. Ooh, look at that. Nobody wants to say anything. I guess they're like, yeah, it's pretty clear what you can't be doing around here. Now it's in Parak 8. You shall faithfully observe all the instruction. Um, that I enjoin upon you today that you may thrive and increase 
and be able to possess the land that Hashem promised an oath to your fathers. And just notice this wording. It's really important. Let's see if the sages comment on it. Explain this in its plain sense. Every commandment and a Midrash explanation is taking it to me in the whole of the commandment. Uh, no, that's not really, I, I don't really know what's going on with that. Uh, if you want to keep the commandments so that you may live, then remember them all, all the way. Um, you will live and be fruitful. Okay. So, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. nope. So, you are going to faithfully observe all the instruction that I enjoin upon you. And that is uh, mit. Uh, vecha. So it's the mitzvah, all the ha mitzvah, all the commandments. Um, it's not the word Torah here. It's the actual do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. That's what you have to faithfully observe. Um, that I'm putting on you today. Something special about that day that he's saying that. That you can thrive and increase and you'll be able to possess the land that Hashem promised on oath to your fathers. Remember the long way that your God Hashem has made, have made you travel in the wilderness these past 40 years in order to test you by hardship to learn what was in your hearts. Whether you would keep the divine commandments or not. And God subjected you to the hardship of hunger and then gave you manna to eat which neither you nor your ancestors had ever known in order to teach you that a human being does not live on bread alone but that one may live on anything that Hashem decrees. We know that from the King James. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the every word of God. Uh, the clothes upon you didn't wear out. Their clothes stayed. Now, I don't know what the babies did as they got bigger. but Nor did your feet swell these 40 years as you walked around. And notice that Moshe is talking to the children of the ones that died off as if they were experiencing it from day one. Which is the way that when you're in the um, uh, the Seder, the Pesach, the Passover Seder, that is how when the Jews are reading from their, their book, the Haggadah, on how to proceed with the Seder, they say we, us, I, like present, like they just experienced it. Bear in mind that your God, Hashem, disciplines you just as a householder disciplines his son. Therefore, keep the commandment of your God, Hashem, walk in God's ways and show reverence. For your God, Hashem, is bringing you to a good land. A land with streams and hills and fountains issuing from plain and hill. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and figs and pomegranates. A land of olive trees and honey. A land where you may eat food without stint, where you will lack nothing. A land whose rocks are iron and from whose hills you can mine copper. And when you have eaten your fill, give thanks to your God Hashem for the good land given to you. That's the end of the first pursuit. And look how he's giving them a rundown on what kind of land it is. Um, not only can you have all the food you want, barley, vines, figs, pomegranates, olive trees, and honey, all the water you need, streams and springs and fountains from the plain and the hill. Also, where there's mountains and stuff, you're going to have rocks, iron, uh, copper. This is really uh, interesting to me because I'm looking at a class from Tel Aviv University from the uh the the website Coursera and was speaking about how Babylon the emperor the emperor empire of Babylon it in their land I they don't have rocks so they don't have these kinds of natural resources um I guess maybe because it's a delta going out from the Euphrates and Tigris maybe that's why they don't have but whatever it is they don't have um rocks and um so, you know, rocks used to build houses and you find things in the rocks. Rocks hold lots of treasures. They didn't have it. So I just thought that was interesting. All right, the second reading, the second Aliyah, we're in Perak 8, Pasuk 11. Take care lest you forget Hashem and fail to keep the divine commandments, rules, and laws that which I enjoin upon you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses to live in and your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold have increased, and everything you own is prospered, beware. So when you're rich, full, and satiated, beware, lest your heart grow haughty, 
and you forget Hashem who freed you from the land of Egypt, the house of bondage, mm. who led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its seraph serpents and scorpions, a parched land with no water in it, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock. Is anybody speaking on that? Um, a dreadful mighty rock. Hmm. Hashem, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your ancestors had never known, in order to test you by hardships, only to benefit you in the end. Now, this is interesting. So this is part of their testing, just so that you would benefit in the end. You know, when you go through a test, don't you come out knowing how good Hashem is? Even though it was a hard test, it might have cost you a lot physically, but it the payment that you receive is in your faith. You have a greater faith because now you know how Hashem works, what He can deliver you from, what He can install into you that you have understanding, whatever. So, to benefit you in the end. Uh, Pasuk 17, And you say to yourself, My own power and the might of my own hands have won this wealth for me. Remember, when you start talking like that, that it is your God, Hashem, who gives you the power to get wealth in fulfillment of the covenant made on oath with your fathers, as is still the case. If you forget Hashem, your God, and follow other gods to serve them or bow down to them, I warn you this day that you shall certainly perish. Like the nations that Hashem will cause to perish before you, so you shall perish. Because you did not heed your God, Hashem. We're in Perak 9. Hear, O Israel, you are about to cross the Jordan and go in and dispossess nations greater and more populous than you. Great cities with walls sky high, a people great and tall, the Anakites of whom you have knowledge, for you have heard it said, who can stand up to the children of Anak? Know this day that none other than your God Hashem is crossing at your head a devouring fire. It is God who will wipe them out, subduing them before you that you may quickly dispossess and destroy them as Hashem promised you. Now we're going to the third Aliyah, third reading, per, uh, Pasuk 4. When your God Hashem has thrust them from your path, do not say to yourselves, Hashem has enabled us to possess this land because of our virtues. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It is rather because of the wickedness of those nations. They don't deserve this land. That Hashem is dispossessing them before you. Um, don't say my righteousness and the wickedness of the, na the nations brought it that I possess it. You can't say it's because of your righteousness. It is not your righteousness. That's interesting. So then the question begs, if those nations that were already in the land, the Hebrewites, Jebusites, all of them, if they were, um, if they were righteous before Hashem, would they have been kicked out? Probably not. It's, I don't know. The question begs. Um, it is not because of your virtues or your rectitude that you will be able to possess their country. Mm, Shep called their country. But it is because of their wickedness that your God Hashem is dispossessing those nations before you. And in order to fulfill the oath that Hashem made to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So know then that it is not for any virtue of yours that your God Hashem is giving you this good land to possess. For you are a stiff-necked people. Remember, never forget, how you provoked God Hashem to anger in the wilderness from the day that you left the land of Egypt until you reached this place and you've continued defiant towards Hashem. And at Horeb, you so provoked Hashem that Hashem was angry enough with you to have destroyed you. Remember, Horeb is Sinai. I have ascended the mountain to receive the tablets of I had ascended the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant that Hashem had made with you. And I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, eating no bread and drinking no water. And Hashem gave me the two tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God with the exact words that Hashem had addressed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly. And at the end of those 40 days and 40 nights, Hashem gave me the two tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant. And Hashem said to me, hurry, go down from here at once for the people whom you brought out of Egypt have acted wickedly. They have been quick to stray from the path that I enjoined upon them, and they made themselves a molten image. Hashem further said to me, I see that this is a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked. Stiff-necked people. They're not naked. Let me alone, and I will destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make you a nation far more numerous than they. I started down the mountain. 
a mountain ablaze with fire, the two tablets of the covenant in my two hands. And I saw how you had sinned against your God, Hashem. You had made yourselves a molten calf. You had been quick to stray from the path that Hashem had enjoined upon you. And thereupon I gripped the two tablets and flung them away with both my hands, smashing them both before your eyes. I threw myself down before Hashem, eating no bread and drinking no water 40 days and 40 nights as before because of the great wrong you have committed, doing what displeased and vexed Hashem. For I was in dread of the fierce anger against you, which moved Hashem to wipe you out. And at that time, too, Hashem gave heed to me. Moreover, Hashem was angry enough with Aaron to have destroyed him. So I would, have, I would also intercede for Aaron at that time. Oh, we got pause on that. Hashem was so mad with um, Aaron that he was about to light him up. Um, because he listened to you. Mm, that's what it, this one says. <clears throat> and this denotes the extermination of one's children. Wow. He was going, wow. Uh, let's see. My prayer availed atone. So that my prayer availed to atone half. Wow. So you said I interceded for Aaron at the time. Or I prayed for Aaron at that time. So my prayer availed to atone for half so that only two of his sons died and two remained alive. So the idea was that he was going to um he was gonna cut off um he was gonna cut off Aaron's children, not just Aaron, but his children. And and Rashi is saying that two died instead of the four. Wow. 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 21. Plus 21. As for that sinful thing you had made, that calf, I took it and put it to the fire. I broke it to bits and ground it thoroughly until it was fine as dust. And I threw it in the, I threw its dust into the brook that comes down from the mountain. And again, you provoked Hashem at Tabera and at Masa and Kibroth had to Ava. And when Hashem sent you on from Kedesh Barnea saying, go up and take possession of the land that I'm giving you, you flouted the command of your God Hashem, who you did not put your trust in nor obey as long as I've known you. You have been defiant toward Hashem. And when I lay prostrate before Hashem those 40 days and 40 nights because Hashem was determined, determined to destroy you, I prayed to Hashem and said, Oh Lord Hashem, do not annihilate your, your very people, your very own people whom you redeemed in your majesty and whom you freed from Egypt with a mighty hand. Give thought to your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And pay no heed to the stubbornness of this people, its wickedness and its sinfulness. Else the country from which you freed us will say, Oh, it's because Hashem was powerless to bring them into the land he promised them. And because of having rejected them, that their God brought them out to have them die in the wilderness. No, oh, I guess he wasn't that, that mighty like we thought. So, yeah, they are your very own people whom you freed with your great might and your outstretched arm. And this is this is the end of our third reading. We're going to jump into the fourth. But look how Moshe is just recounting the whole thing, all the disobedience, so that the children will understand what levels um, of anger they have brought Hashem through and to not do it again. Honor the things He says to do. Thereby Hashem said to me, "Carve out two tablets of stone like the first, and come up to me on the mountain and make an ark of wood." I will inscribe on the tablets the commandments that were on the first tablets that you smashed, you smashed, and you shall deposit them in the ark. I made an ark of acacia wood and carved out two tablets of stone like the first. I took the two tablets with me and went up the mountain. After inscribing on the tablets the same text as on the first, the first Ten Commandments, remember, they're not just Ten Commandments. They're Ten Categories. All the 613 commandments fit within those Ten Categories. So the first, the, the Ten Commandments that Hashem addressed to you on the mountain out of the fire on the day of the assembly, Hashem gave them to me. Then I left and went down from the mountain. I deposited the tablets in the ark that I had made where they still are as Hashem had commanded me. He's showing them, when Hashem told me to do something, I'm doing it. Check my, check my model for you. Do it like that. From Biroth B'nai Yaken, the Israelites marched to Moserah. Aaron died there and was buried there. 
and his son Eliezer became priest in his stead. And from there, they marched to good God, good God, good God to Jotba, a region of running brooks. And at that time, Hashem set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of Hashem's covenant, to stand in attendance upon Hashem and to bless in God's name, as is still the case. So that's cool. So all the way up to this pursuit in the journey that Moshe is recounting to the children, there was no, Levi wasn't really, we don't really see how they're helping out. And boom, here, this is where we get, where they uh, bless and they hold the ark. So that is why Levi has received no her uh, hereditary portion along with its kin. Hashem is its portion as your God Hashem spoke concerning it. I had stayed on that mountain as I did the first time, 40 days and 40 nights, and Hashem heeded me once again. Hashem agreed not to destroy you. And Hashem said to me, up, resume the march at the head of the people, that they may go in and possess the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. That's the end of the fourth reading. Fifth Aliyah. We're in Perak 10, Pasuk 12. And now, O Israel, what does your God Hashem demand of you? Only this, to revere your God Hashem, to walk only in divine paths, and to love and serve your God Hashem with all your heart and soul. Divine paths. Hmm. That's an interesting commentary. Hmm. See if anybody says on that. Nope. Hmm. Divine paths. The lechet v'chol, the rachav. Keeping Hashem's commandments and laws, which I enjoin upon you today, for your good. Mark, the heavens to their utmost reaches belong to your God Hashem, the earth and all that are on it. Yet, it was to your ancestors that Hashem was drawn out of love for them, so that you, their lineal descendants were chosen from amongst all peoples, as is now the case. Cut away, therefore, the thickening about your hearts and stiffen your necks no more. I want to go back to this pursuit real quick. That you were chosen from among all peoples. And you you can see at, when you read the uh, Genesis or Bereshit, the mitzvot, not all of these mitzvot, but Hashem had charged all mankind to do these things and follow under him. But you can see that mankind did not follow the things of Hashem. You can see that in the marble and the flood, and then it just gets worse and worse and worse until finally Hashem carves out a nation for himself that will follow his ways. That's where Israel came in. Us Goyim, our, our ancestors chose not to do the things of Hashem. Just like the children of Israel to this day, the, the Jews, they have to follow after the choices their um, ancestors made to choose to follow Hashem. So that must they can they must continue to follow us for us. We have to choose Hashem because our ancestors chose against Hashem. So we have to make a different choice, those of us in the nations. That's why we learn from Israel because they know how to follow Hashem. As you can see here. For your God, Hashem, is God supreme and Lord supreme, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who shows no favor and takes no bribe, but uphold, upholds the cause of the fatherless and the widow and befriend, befriends the stranger, providing food and clothing. You too must befriend this stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Let's just see what that says. I don't see anything here. Do not reproach thy fellow man for a fault which is also thine. I don't see how that's loving the stranger, but um, yeah, I don't see how that's, that's anyway. You must revere Hashem. Only your God shall you worship. To God shall you hold fast, and by God's name shall you swear. Back in the day, you know, you swear to, and and whatever that you're swearing to, that should be truthfully so. Like that should be it. Um, and if you say I swear on Hashem's name. To give you $100 and you don't, then you have swore falsely and you have just broken that commandment. Remember, the 10 commandments are the 10 categories. All 613 fit in one of those categories. Your ancestors went down to Egypt, 70 persons. Oh, sorry, let me go back, 21. 
Hashem is your glory and your God who wrought for you those marvelous, awesome deeds that you saw with your own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt, 70 people, and now your God, Hashem, has made you as numerous as the Kochavim, right? Kochavim, the stars of heaven. Um, and if that that should strike you interesting, if you listen to the, the Bereshit teaching from Rav Bernstein that we have in the Torah Parsha Bereshit, Bring all that Hebrew. Um, all right, we made it to Perak eleven, Pasuk one. Love therefore your God Hashem and always keep God's charge, God's laws, God's rules, and God's commandments. Um, this is very, 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 very important. So you are Shomer Shabbat of his Hukim, his Mishpatim, his Mitzvot, and uh, let me see, his charge, Shomer. Um, shom, uh, shamarta. So there, you, you can see that there's different things. There's the laws that they have to keep. God's charge, how he's the like the Mishkan and all, like how to, he wants things taken care of. His laws, his rules, and his rules and his commandments. So there's several things that the Jewish people have to even to the even to this day. So. When you say, oh, I don't, we're no, in Western thought, we're not lo under the law. Do you know what you're talking about? Do you see what has to be kept here? The charge, the laws, the rules, the commandments. There's divisions the here. And the Torah is the instruction on all of these things. Take thought this day what it was not your children who neither experienced nor witnessed the lesson of your God Hashem. God's majesty, mighty hand and outstretched arm. Check this out. Take thought this day that it was not your children who neither experienced nor witnessed the lesson of your God Hashem. God's majesty, his mighty hand and outstretched arm, the signs and deeds that God performed in Egypt against Pharaoh saying, excuse me, against Pharaoh, king of Egypt and all his land. Um, so uh, Moshe is commenting on this that, you know, these guys, these little ones weren't here. So I'm now speaking <clears throat> to the ones who said, Oh, we don't, we didn't see this. We didn't do this. We weren't there. So, um, I'm speaking to you guys. And what, um, and also what God did to Egypt's army, its horses, chariots, how Hashem rolled back upon them and the rolled back upon them, the waters of the sea of reeds. Look at that wording. He rolled the water on them when they were pursuing you, thus destroying them once and for all. What God did for you in the wilderness before you arrived in this place and what God did to Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, sons of Reuben, when the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them along with their households, their tents and every living thing in their, in their train from amidst all Israel. Interesting that Hashem would put them in the same breath or Moshe would put them in the same breath with Egypt, like enemies of the people kind of thing. Like Hashem getting rid of all of these little enemies and um, but that it, let me see, from, uh, got rid of their tents and every living thing in their train from amidst all Israel. But it was you who saw with your eye, own eyes, all the marvelous deeds that Hashem per performed. Keep therefore all the instruction that I enjoin upon you today so that you may have the strength to enter and take possession of the land that you are about to cross into and possess. And that you may long endure upon the soil that Hashem swore to your fathers to assign to them. And to their heirs, a land flowing with milk and honey. Six Aliyah. For the land that you are about to enter and possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you've come. It's not the same. There the grain you sowed had to be watered by your own labors like a vegetable garden. But the land you're about to cross into and possess, a land of hills and valleys, it soaks up its water from the rains of heaven. Let's see. What does that mean? Um... Let's see. Well, Moses is going to explain us. Pursuit 12. It's a land where your God looks after. So you don't do anything to it. Hashem looks after it. After it, On which your God, Hashem, always keeps an eye from the year's beginning to the year's end. And then if you obey the commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, loving your God and serving God with all your heart and soul, I will grant the rain for your land in season and the early rain and the late. You shall gather in all your new grain and wine and oil. I will also provide grass in the field for your cattle, and thus you shall eat your fill. So this is Hashem talking. 
because he's the caretaker of the land. Yeah, you might plant and this and that and sow and reap, but the water and how it grows, that's Hashem doing that. Take care not to be lured away to serve other gods and bow to them, for Hashem's anger will flare up against you, shutting up the skies so that there will be no rain and ground. And look, it's here right here. For Hashem's anger will flare up against you, shutting up the sky so that there will be no rain and the ground will not yield its produce and you will soon perish from the good land that Hashem is assigning to you. Therefore, impress these, my words upon your very heart, bind them as a sign to your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead and teach them to your children reciting them when you stay at home, when you're in the way, when you lie down and when you get up and inscribe them on the doorposts of your house. Mezuzah, and on your gates, and to the end, to the end that you and your children may endure in the land that Hashem swore to your fathers to assign to them, as long as there is a heaven over the earth. And the last pursuit: If then you faithfully keep all this instruction that I command you, loving your God Hashem, walking in all God's ways, and holding fast to God, Hashem will dislodge before you all these nations. You will dispossess nations greater and more numerous than you. Every spot on which your foot treads shall be yours. Your territory shall extend from the wilderness of the Lebanon and, uh, and from the river the Euphrates to the western sea. No one shall stand up to you. Your God and Shem will put the dread and the fear of you over the whole land in which you set foot as promised. And that's the end of the Torah parasha. You see the next one coming up, Ray A. Eh? But we're going to get into the Haftarah, which is in Isaiah. That was just a beautiful ending because Hashem can't be scary I think sometimes oh my gosh Ooh, what are you talk? if you're talking to your people like that imagine us that are not your people that that choose to be okay choose to uh, walk alongside Israel okay so the Haftarah is in Isaiah chapter 49 uh, we're going to do Pasuk 14 through 50 Oh, chapter 49, pursuit 14 through 51, 3. So, Zion says, God has forsaken me. My sovereign has forgotten me. Ooh, let's start off the bat with drama. Can a woman forget her baby or disown the child of her womb? Though she might forget, I could never forget you. I never could forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Swiftly your children are coming. Those who ravage and ruin you shall leave you. Look up all around you and see they are all assembled and come to you. As I live, declares God, you shall don them like jewels. Deck yourselves with them like a bride. As for your ruins and desolate places and your land laid waste, you shall soon be crowded with settlers while destroyers stay far from you. The children that you thought had lost shall yet say in your hearing, the place is too crowded for me and make room for me to settle. And you will say to yourself, who bore these for me? When I was bereaved and barren, exiled and disdained, by whom then were these reared? I was left all alone, and where have these been? Thus said my sovereign God, I will raise my hand to the nations and lift my ends to peoples, and they shall bring your sons in their bosoms and carry your daughters on their backs. Kings shall tend to your children. Their queens shall serve you as nurses. They shall bow to you, face to the ground, and lick the dust of your feet, and you shall know that I am God. Those who trust in me shall not be shamed. Can spoil be taken from a warrior? Are captives retrieved from a victor? Yes, yet, thus says God. Captives shall be taken from a warrior, and spoils shall be retrieved from a tyrant. For I will contend with your adversaries, and I will deliver your children. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. Yucky. <laughs> they shall be drunk with their own blood, as with wine. And all humankind shall know that I, God, am your Savior, the mighty one of Jacob, your Redeemer. Thus said God, well, where is the bill of divorce of your mother whom I dismissed? And which of my creditors was it to whom I sold you off? You were only sold off for your sins and your mother dismissed for your crimes. Why, when I came, was no one there? Why, when I called, would none respond? It is, my, is my arm then too short to rescue? Have I not the power to save? With a mere rebuke, I drive the sea and turn the rivers into desert. Their fish stink from stink. German stink from lack of water. They die. They lie dead of thirst. I clothe the skies in blackness and make their raiment sackcloth. My sovereign God gave me a skilled tongue to know how to speak timely words to the weary. Morning by morning, God rouses me, rousing my ear to give heed like disciples. 
My sovereign God opened my ears and I did not disobey. I did not run away. I offered my back to floggers and my cheeks to those who tore out my hair. I did not hide my face from insult and spittle. But my sovereign God will help me. Therefore, I feel no disgrace. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know I shall not be shamed. My vindicator is at hand. Who dares contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who would be my opponent? Let them approach me. Lo, my sovereign God will help me. Who can get a verdict A verdict against me? They shall all wear out like a garment. The, the moth shall consume them. Who among you reveres God and heeds the words of the appointed servant? Mm, heeds the words of the appointed servant like Moshe? Though walking in the darkness and have no light, let them trust in the name of God and rely on upon his God and you are all kindlers of fire fire girding on fire brands walk by the blaze of your fire by the braids that you <laughs> by the brands you have lit this has come down come to you from my hand you shall lie down in pain listen to me you who pursue justice you who seek God like the rock you are hewn from to the poor you are dug from look back to Abraham your father and to Sarah who brought you forth but he was only one when I called him. Wow, that's fire. Abraham was only one when I first called him. But I blessed him and made him many. Truly God has confronted Zion. Excuse me. Truly God has comforted Zion. Comforted all her ruins. Made her wilderness like Eden. Her desert like the garden of God. Gladness and joy shall abide there. Thanksgiving and the sound of music. Mm, that's not an original sound of music. Come from the Bible. Okay, wow. So we could, like, that whole rundown was like the Torah parasha. What happens when you're not doing what Hashem says and what it looks like on Israel and what it, what it looks like when Hashem rescues you because you are doing the things that he wants. He, yeah, that was amazing. Beautiful, beautiful in Isaiah. So that was Isaiah 49, 14, all the way through 51, 3. Thank you for joining again. Put your questions below with your references uh, or whatever, your comments, if you can help in any way. We're always looking for a rabbi that can help us out with understanding, but until we can get one, you know, this is where we are. And uh, I wish you a wonderful Shabbat Shalom and an awesome Shavuot Tov. Till next time.